So welcome to a new series we're going to commence on the Road Cycling Academy channel. Not every Friday, but some Fridays. Neil Stanbury, the expert bike fitter, is going to share with us a unique situational scenario that has come from one of his clients out of his clinic in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, and the solution that he's been able to come up with to help the client get more comfortable, faster, and stronger on the bike. Now, we don't have a name for this series yet. We're thinking of Neil's Friday workshop bodges or Freaky Fridays with Neil or something like that. So we're going to put a list of a few suggestions below. Be keen to get your thoughts. And let's get into this video. So Neil, you've got an unusual saddle there and potentially a new series for the channel. Do you want to talk us through what you've got there? Yeah, mate. So um, look, we were basically struggling for quality content. So <laughs> we've just totally pulled something out of the hat here. Um, no, what, what I'm going to do is just describe to you, um, every, every now and again, we'll do a bit of an oddball workshop type video where, where I show you some of the weird and wonderful stuff that I do, modifying saddles, modifying shoes and that kind of stuff. And this is the first one. This is a- You a, love doing this stuff, don't you? Yeah, oh, I'm a, <laughs> mate, I'm a tinkerer. I love, love building stuff, love fixing things. Yeah. And it gives me an excuse to get into the garage and, you know, and, and bodge something up like this. So I've done, I think I've done three of these over the years. Yep. This is a, a Light 209, which is a, a Seller SMP Light 209, and a client of mine donated this one to me. And we've basically repurposed it for a, a bit of an oddball reason. And the eagle-eyed viewers will probably notice that this saddle's a little bit unusual looking in that one side of it is lower than the other. And that's what we've done here. We've modified this seat. And I'll, I'll walk you through why and how. So I had a client come in um, a couple of months ago and he, I believe his main problem was uh, an inability to sit square on the seat. He was constantly sitting oblique to the bike and I think he was getting one-sided saddle sores and that type of stuff and he was getting left leg symptoms. And across the course of the fit, we basically didn't identify any reason why he might be sitting asymmetrically. There was, he had had no major leg length discrepancies. His general position by the time we were finished was really good, but he still had an inability to sit square on the bike and his pelvis would just recurrently sit forward on the right hand side. And so his whole pelvis was oblique to the bike and he had a lot of flow on effects from that further down the kinetic chain. Common or rare? Oh, it's very common to ride that way, but it's less common that I get to the end of a three hour session and I can't figure out why. Right. Usually there's an obvious cause, like a large leg length discrepancy or the Q factor's all off. There's some sort of compensation strategy going on because of a physical asymmetry in the rider. And some of those can be really, really rare, and this is one of the rarest ones. So this guy, um, after much head scratching and me going, yeah, what, what, geez, I'm, I'm running out of options here. <laughs> We, we thought, well, let's, let's just see if this guy has an asymmetrical pair of, of sit bones. Right. Um, and it turned out to be correct. So this is a very, very rare. Like I said, I think I've only seen it two or three times or possibly I've seen it more times than that. But if the difference in the height of the sit bones is very small, it doesn't matter that much. But once it gets up above about five or six millimeters, it can start to cause serious problems and nothing you do will get the rider to sit perfectly square. So essentially his two, in the inferior projections of his, his ischiopubic ramus, it's a bit of a mouthful, yes. but we'll, we'll refer to them as sit bones, right? So the interior projection, the inferior projections of his sit bones are uneven in height. And so the actual shape of the bone, not, not because of a fracture or anything, but just genetics, the shape of the bones was staggered like this, where his right sit bone sits down lower than his left one. And you can't easily figure this out without an x-ray or a bit of guess and check, which is what we did here. We didn't, we didn't bother going and sending him off for an x-ray because this worked so well. So what we did was tested the theory. I got some bits of three millimeter thick EVA, which is just a medium density foam, and I'll, sh I'll we'll splice some footage of that in when the rider comes back to pick this saddle up. And we built up the left side of the seat about eight or nine millimeters and just taped it on, stuck him on it, and he sat perfectly square. And he said, oh, that feels great. You know, my two sit bones feel like they're being loaded fairly evenly. So what I did was I sent him away like that to ride for a month to make sure that we were right about this. Because if, if, it, if it wasn't a good solution, he would have come back and complained and said, oh, yeah, it's hurting over there, it's not right. He came back after a month and said, look, it, it feels great. So what we did then was modify this Light 209. And Light 209s are ideal for this because they've got a fair bit of padding to start with. So you can remove a fair bit of material on one side and it still, you know, still maintains a lot of its shape and doesn't end up sort of where one side 
side is just down on the shell of the saddle. Yes. So these are these are the best for it. They've also got two discrete halves and they're stitched down the middle, covered with leather, and you can easily pick them apart. You can undo the four bolts here, holding the rails on, remove the rails so you can access the seat. Um, you can peel off the leather. It's just lightly glued onto the foam that's underneath. You can peel it back. And then the technique is to sort of scribe a line where you want to remove the material. Use a very thin, very sharp, flexible Stanley knife to take off some of the material. And then a belt sander with some sort of 60 or 80 grit sandpaper. And I think we've got some bodgy phone footage that yes. I took in the garage of that, <laughs> which will show. Apologies for the quality of the footage. I have got a decent camcorder, but I didn't use it for this. This is just the, this, just the phone. So um, we've removed the material, we've smoothed it down. We've ended up with this profile here where the right hand side is about seven, eight, nine millimeters lower. And it's it's not taken off completely at the front here. There's maybe a three or four mil drop, but the section where the rider will be bearing their weight at the rear has been taken down about that, that amount. And then we basically glue the leather back down. So you, you use use a contact cement. Selly's quick grip is, is right. really good for this. Yeah, certain adhesives can eat into the foam, but quick grip doesn't. So you spread it in, you spray it in, it comes in a spray bottle or, or in, a, in a little squeezy tube, spread it in, stretch the leather back over, and then I've re-stapled it with some three millimeter staples around the edge just to hold it while the glue dries. And you end up with what at first glance looks like a relatively normal seat from the left but from the right you can see the logo has been stretched down lower yep. and the material has been taken away and you know this the, I'm hoping this works fine because to, to modify it again is a bit of a mission we've got to take all the staples out take off more material alter it so the rider is going to come back uh, I think he's coming back in a week or two I'll get some footage of him on it and see how he goes and this an iteration of this will be a good long-term solution for this guy and um, you know, it's each one of them that I've done has been has been different. I had one that was cut away on the left, um, but each time we've used a light 209, and it's one of the best solutions because they've got these discrete halves. You can remove material and allow the rider to sit down on one side, and the SMPs tend to hold people really well, so they can't shuffle around as much as on flat style seats, and that can give you some kind of. Um, some certainty of where the rider is going to be bearing their weight when you modify the seat. Yes. Yeah. So um, we'll see how he goes with it. Hopefully it's a good long-term solution and it's comfortable. Um, and yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. That's that's a rare thing. Um, very, very difficult to diagnose and of no obvious causation. I did have one lady, I must say, many years ago who'd fractured her ischiopubic rami in a fall and the bone callus that had formed when the fracture had healed had actually made it lumpy and larger. And mm. we, did, we, we had to cut away her seat in a very specific spot and then recover it because it was rubbing. Um, but most of them seem to be just genetic, you know. Right. Yeah, you, you would think, like it's a logical assumption when anyone's buying a saddle or riding a bike that your two sit bones are gonna be relatively even. But that's a bit of an illogical assumption when you really think about it. You think about how much the shape and structure of, of the right, of, of a person's bones vary left to right in other areas of the body. And it's not illogical to assume that these things might be five mil off, mm. you know? And then the rider will just always bear more weight on one sit bone, or if it's a big enough discrepancy, they will twist. Yes. And it's also illogical to assume that the two sit bones have exactly the same shape in a three-dimensional sense. Maybe one curves more aggressively backwards, maybe they're staggered fore and aft like that, or you know, one of them's further away from the center line of the person's perineum than the other. You know? yes. <laughs> There's all these logical assumptions that you, you kind of think, well, this is the way saddles are designed. And for the vast majority of people, that, that's close enough. Um, but there are people that are where that's not close enough. Yes. And yeah, this is some of the oddball stuff that we come across. And as a problem solving, uh, as a problem solving task, as a problem solving conundrum, it's kind of an interesting one. But as I said, very difficult to diagnose. Um, an X-ray, I've had to X-ray a couple of people's pelvises just to just to see what the heck was going on there when we were making stuff like this to confirm our diagnosis. Um, but this worked so well uh, initially when we tried padding up his left side that I just said this is this has got to be what it is. So mm. you know, let's give this a go, see if it works. And a, and a rider had already gifted me this saddle. Um, who he he 
he'd uh, been sitting asymmetrically on it and had smashed up the front section and he, he was going through them every six months um, because he was sitting so twisted on it. And so he'd just given me this one as a... Wow. Uh, because it was dead. So I've, I've repurposed it, rebuilt it, and we didn't even have to buy a new saddle, which is good. Yes. <laughs>